I want to know, as I think this is a quite interesting clip, I want to know, you guys, what was your first reaction? What was your first reaction to seeing Brendan Shaw do comedy? Like, what was your first initial reaction? Like, what was it? Like, how did you feel when you first saw You'd Be Surprised? What was your first reaction? Because I have to be honest, I was, I think I've stated it many times on this podcast, many times on the stream. I came into this kind of detractor, hate stream sort of stuff as a fan. I was a big The Fire and the Kid fan. Back in the day on Fox, back in the day with Evan the Beard, back in the day with Special K, that was my shit. That was my shit. I loved The Fire and the Kid. I was actually rooting for them. I kind of lived vicariously through them. The fact that Brendan was a pretty ordinary UFC fighter who clearly wasn't going to be good enough to win a belt, but was pretty much pursuing a pretty decent career in podcasting and clearly looked like he had a talent and ability to be successful in that field. And Brian Callan, a guy who was kind of always the kind of, um, what they say? He was, you know, that what's that saying people say when you're like, you're never the bride, you're always a groom. You know, was it? What is it? Never the bride, always a something. I don't know. Always a bridesmaid, right? Br Brian was always that kind of guy. He was always kind of around, but never really burst and became like the big star that he kind of always wanted to be. So that podcast, you kind of wanted to, you kind of wanted them to, to succeed. You wanted Brendan to kind of figure it out, maybe quit the UFC because he was getting smacked up too much. You wanted Brian to finally get his own sitcom, to finally get a starring role in the movie and end up being the next Tom Hanks as his agent once time, one time told him, right? Agents as well, man. They, they blow so much gas up your ass, isn't it? Incredible. Imagine an agent telling you you're going to be the next fucking Tom Hanks. That doesn't help you, you know. That probably hurts you more than anything. But anyway, they were really good. I really did enjoy their podcast. I didn't miss an episode. Sometimes I'd, sometimes I'd save the podcast and I'd only watch it on video because I wanted to see their mannerisms when they made a particular joke. And sometimes I'd listen. Sometimes I was such a fan, I'd listen to the podcast on audio and then I'd go back and watch it on video. So it's crazy. So anyway, then of course, over time, Brennan ended up being the person that we know him to be now. I'm not sure if it's the money. I'm not sure if it's the, the success. I'm not sure if it's the clout. I'm not sure if he's just always like this and just turned into a douche. But regardless, he made me not like him anymore, which is a shame, really, because, again, I actually liked the guy as a person. I thought he was amazing. I thought his story and how he was kind of coming up, trying to figure it out and stuff was pretty cool. I got behind it. I believe the whole marketing gimmick behind it. I believe everything. I took it hook, line, and sinker. Same with Brian Callan. And in the end, you know, I kind of saw through it over time when things got Expose and whatnot. But I never knew how good or bad he was at comedy until You Be Surprised came out. Because if you remember, before You Be Surprised, Brendan was very, 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 very strict about never showing clips of himself doing stand up. Never. He never showed anything. He never recorded anything. And this was before, this is also when people were starting to upload stuff on social. It wasn't as bad as it is now because everyone's doing clips on social with fucking subtitles. But before people were like dabbling in it. And to be honest, like Brendan and Brian were quite new, were quite, um, were basically first on that whole podcast comedy thing. Like they could have really cornered it if they wanted to, like doing the whole clips and stuff and whatnot. But they chose not to. Anyway, regardless, Brendan wasn't really keen on putting his content out there. Then You'd Be Surprised came out and I was like, what? This is what you've been talking about all the time on your podcast. This is what you bore us to death with. Going to do spots, on the road, touring, road dog, road, like, like all these things, like going above and beyond to make sure you go to your dates to do your comedy tour, abandoning your family, like, you know what I mean? All this sort of stuff. And this is what you did when you went on stage. This is how shit you are. I didn't get it. And I think the reason why I didn't get it, because as a fan, I'm not sure if you guys are the same, I didn't really get into like the business or the or the behind the scenes of stand up until I started listening to comedy podcasts. I'd watch stand up comedy specials like Kevin Hart's ones, Dave Chappelle ones, Louis C.K. ones. Um, you know, I'd go back and watch Richard Pryor ones. I'd go back and watch um, what's his fucking name? Hey, with the, with the gloves. What's his fucking name? What's his name with the glove? With, with the gloves cut off? With the glasses? And he's got that kind of American, he's got that kind of uh, greasy Jer Jersey Shore Italian thing going on. What's that comedian's name again? Oh, what's his fucking name? You guys must know in the chat. I used to watch a lot of his specials too and go back and watch it, um, listen to his comedy albums too. Oh, what's his fucking name? Andrew Dice Clay. Yeah, that's him. Dice Clay. I'll go listen to him and that stuff, right? And um, I'll just watch it as a, as, a, as a viewer, right? I'll just watch it as a viewer. And um, no, not George Carlin, George Carlton. Mr. Chicken Fingers, George Carlton, remember that? <laughs> anyway, I'd go back and watch all those specials 
but I would never really care about how they put the bits together, um, where they filmed it, how much they got paid. If is it gonna go on Netflix? Is it gonna go on HBO? I only started caring about that stuff when the comedians started talking about it on podcasts. Like they make you care about their business. But it got annoying when I watched. You'd be surprised because like you made me care about your business and your fucking shit at comedy. You're terrible. And I couldn't equate it. I couldn't understand how you could do comedy for so... Don't get me wrong. He wasn't doing it for too long, but he was still doing it for like, I don't know, three years, I think, when he filmed, you'd be surprised, maybe two and a half years. So he still had some time to do it. So to be that bad, it really did blow my mind. I couldn't understand how you could be that bad and also be that successful. It didn't really correlate to me. So the only reason why I say that, a long blown out intro and explanation as I always do, is to play this clip that was posted on the Friday Kids subreddit of these two black guys from America who do reactions. And they basically watched, I guess, Brendan Shaw for the first time. And this is legit, like a genuine good kind of reaction that everyone would have if they watched Brendan Shaw for the first time and kind of was exposed to his humor. We sit. The fuck? No, you don't sit. She goes, bueno, we sit. I went, please don't do this. I promise you, you do not fucking fit. <laughs> I think that might be the best the best screen grab you need as a reaction to Brenda Shaw actually put the both in this might be the best reaction to Brenda Shaw ever right one guy killing himself and another guy killing himself with laughter absolutely dying I want to guys to know in the chat what happens honestly what was your first reaction when you first saw Brendan please tell me what was your first reaction? How did you re how did you react when you when you saw him do stand up and like you know the big stage, the glitzy lights, that outfit, that Kim Jong Un haircut, those black skinny jeans, the Jordans? Please tell me, please tell me, please, please tell me, you guys, what your reaction was? What your reaction was to seeing that? Um, Lacar's data says I couldn't talk. Anything is possible, said Eddie D. Yep. That's the thing that I say quite often on this podcast. I say Brendan should actually be an inspiration to all of us. Because if Brendan can drive a purple Ferrari, no, a purple Porsche, have a massive mansion um, and all this good stuff, then we can do it too. I honestly think we can do it too. I really do believe that. So let's let's all have faith in ourselves, guys. Let's all have faith in ourselves. But big up, big up. The Asian doctor joke was a red flag. <laughs> he seemed like he did everything, but right joke says Koila. No, um, it's LA Showtime bullshit. What people saying here? Hey, big up! Yes, for the fun. Big up the big up a donation. I think I got here. I can't even actually see what, who gave it to me. I need to flip in, get back on here. How do I check the donations? Oh, this is gonna be mad, isn't it? How do I check it? Somebody donated to me. Do I check? Can I check in on the on the feed? You is someone should be able to see in the feed. Let me see if I can get your name up. Bear with me one second, so I can holler at you. Big up to Splash Daddy four twenty for the five dollar donation. I appreciate you, friend. I bloody appreciate you so bloody much. But yeah, what's everyone else saying? Um, the first reaction, my first time seeing... So this is from A Asties, Asties V. My first time seeing his stand-up was the Gringo Pappy and it was bad. Oh, bless you. Imagine seeing Brenda the first time at Gringo Pappy. I actually think... Unpopular opinion. Unpopular opinion, right? I actually think... You'd be surprised is better than Gringo Pappy. There's better jokes on Gringo Pappy, in my opinion, because he's clearly trying to write jokes. Don't get me wrong, he's clearly trying to write jokes. But I think as a special overall, you'd be surprised it's far better. From the production, everything around it is far better. Like, like I, I think so. Plus, he comes into it very naive and open-eyed. He's clearly having a fun time on stage. He's just not good at doing stand-up. He's clearly, if you watch them, you'd be surprised. You can see he's clearly having a good time. But I think Gringo Pappy, he was like tense, trying to be a stand-up comedian, and it just came across weird. But there was some good jokes, like one or two good ones here and there. Um, big ups. Uh, what were we were saying? Uh, Fred said, honestly, we should all we should all thank Rogan for his um giving us a specimen that is short. Endless comedy, I agree. Big us papa. Um yes, the first one's better. 
So if, if people are agreeing, yeah, the first one is better. Cool. Yeah, Eddie D saying, yeah, you'd be surprised it's better than Gringo Pappy. Gringo Pappy is what you get when you have no one being truthful with you. Yeah, Gringo Pappy is what you get when you don't have no one truthful with you. And it's also what you get when you try to, like, do it on your own. Because he kept saying that a lot. He kept saying that. Because if you remember, if you remember, you'd be surprised. If you remember he did that video of the behind the scenes of how he was putting a special together. And he had that clip of him in his mansion with um, two writers, these two guys who was helping him write jokes. And he was talking about his friends, having a community around him, have, being surrounded by killers and murderers. There was a lot of talk about his community. In this special, there was a lot of talk about him rejecting big networks, which obviously a lie. There was a lot of talks about him doing it himself, putting up billboards and all that marketing stuff. But there wasn't a lot of talk about him reaching out to comedians to come and help him with the, with the stand-up. If anything, the only time I heard him talk about another comedian was when he mentioned Andrew Schultz. He said, oh, Andrew Schultz helped me, which I don't think is true. I doubt Andrew Schultz helped him with that comedy special because if he did, it's, you know that probably looks bad on Andrew Schultz. But he did do it on his own. I think Gringo Pappy, he did, he did that solely by himself to kind of prove a point. And it went terribly wrong. Where I think you'd be surprised it was more of a collaborative effort. Plus it was a bit, he was green. He didn't really know what he was doing. And even though it was fucking shocking, I still think as a, as a special overall, as something to watch as entertainment, that's a far better... Ref and I also think if you're a fan of Brendan, I think you'd be surprised as a far better example of representation of who he is and Gringo Pappy. Gringo Pappy is a little bit, a little bit fucked up, in my opinion, again. But what do I know, you know? What do I know? <laughs>